Have you ever wondered how to successfully sell fine jewelry online? Well, I'm asking you that question specifically because if you've ever been thinking that you can't sell fine jewelry online and or that people aren't buying fine jewelry right now, and that you can't do it through a virtual trunk show, well, I have got a treat for you today because I have a very special guest, Shahana of Shahana Jewels on the show today. And she's going to talk about how she sold literally over $39,000 in two hours doing a virtual event, selling her fine jewelry and pearls on, uh, for her birthday sale. So I'm excited to invite Shahana on the show. You're really going to enjoy this, especially if you have a fine jewelry brand, or if you've been thinking about doing virtual trunk shows. So let's dive in. I am so excited to have a rock star or a pearl star, I should say, on the show today. Shahana, and I'm not even going to try to massacre your last name because that would be sad. <laughs> How do you say your last name, Shahana? Um, it's Kimi Anatao. And my husband always tells me it's, uh, it means to find, look for something good. As he and I found something good and him. <laughs> exactly. I love him. He's so cute. <laughs> anyway, I wanted to, I'm so excited to interview you today because you were in our mastermind program when we still had that program. I don't, how many years ago? Like three, four years ago. Yeah. And um, I just love the energy of you and your husband. And you have, you live in New Zealand uh, you sell fine jewelry, you're doing pearls, you have been branching out into multiple types of revenue streams. And I know a, a lot of your focus had been on wholesale and traditional retail for a long time. And cracking that kind of online code was a new thing for you. And your jewelry is not inexpensive. You know, it's fine jewelry and pearls. And you posted something in our Desi Diamond Insiders community a couple of days ago. And I was like, I got to interview you, Shay, because <laughs> there's no <laughs> way that like it was just crazy because you made, well, you've even made more now. You posted that you made $30,000 and with about 10 hours of work doing a virtual trunk show. And basically, um, now you've done almost $40,000. You said like 39 and you're still making sales. Yeah. So I'm excited to hear how you did this because it's going to be awesome. <laughs> so tell us a little bit um, about your journey into jewelry. Okay, well, so um, I, I had a day job. I still do, by the way. Um, and um, I didn't like my work, obviously. And, you know, we were thinking at that time, well, we need to transition into a, something that we love mm -hmm. and we're passionate about. Um, so we started the jewelry business. And had no idea, really, honestly, Tracy, until I found you online one day. And um, my husband was in L.A. and I was in Oakland. And I did not sleep that night. And I knew he was landing at 5 the next morning. And I was so excited because everything I wanted to know, you were saying, you were, out, you were speaking to me. You were speaking directly to me. And I was like, yes, yes, yes. I want to meet this lady. I want to meet her now. I can't wait. So um, we started Flourish and Thrive. Um, really because one, I wanted to leave my day job. Um, and two, I couldn't find pearl jewelry that I loved. Mm -hmm. And three, life was too short. I didn't want to waste my time doing something that I didn't like. So, I mean, we're at the stage now where I'm part time, I can work from home. So I'm liking that extra income there and having to do what I like now. So it's a good balance I have now that I'm happy with. That is so amazing and <laughs> awesome. So um, tell us about your pearl jewelry line too. Okay, so basically um, my pearl jewelry line, um, I, I focus on Tahitian pearls and um, I make a lot of uh, bold striking pieces. So when I say bold, I don't mean big and large. They're just very different from what you see in the shops. Mm -hmm. They're more modern and striking. So a lot of the women like it because they do stand out. They do The jewelry does strike conversation. Um, and also, you know, everyone wants one when they wear it, their sister-in-laws, their aunties, their mothers always want one as well. So they love having that, I guess, fashion advantage. Yeah. <laughs> so cool. Um, yeah, but like our brand itself, like Tracy, our just cause, and we learned this in the, um, you know, laying the foundation, the longer, every time I do it, I've done it a couple of times, I'm continuously digging deeper. And like the brand really, I found my true calling and it really is about, creating a world, you know, where 
we can help more women, like help more women because we want them to be more financially um, inclusive where they can support and, you know, improve their own lives. And that's something that we strongly believe in and that's what gets me up in the morning. Uh, we do that through hiring women in India, in okay. New Zealand, but also helping women in the Pacific because most of my customers are Pacific women. Yeah. And so we give back to these women in the Pacific that are starting their own businesses. So we, we use Kiva and we do that through there. Oh, that's so amazing. So it's like jewelry <clears throat> with a cause too, which is really yes. incredible. Yes. That's awesome. Yeah. So I know that a lot of your business in the beginning and up until probably a couple of weeks ago, <laughs> I come from wholesale, but you know, New Zealand maybe hasn't been affected in the same way. And I know that when you were in our mastermind program, one of the conversations we were having was that, you know, New Zealanders don't necessarily shop online as much as other parts of the world. And so you were trying to figure out how you could get people to buy virtually or and find jewelry virtually in the online experience, but also expand your wholesale account. So my first question for you is how have you kind of pivoted since wholesale is taking a little bit of a backseat in the short term? So basically with, um, I think wholesale has um, always pivoted for us to be honest. It's always been a struggle to get into the New Zealand market. Yeah. Um, but what I've created is I've created affiliate uh, affiliate programs so I've got some in Fiji, Australia, and I'm working on Hawaii at the moment. These ladies are all my good friends, all family members that I know. They're single moms, and I know that they want to make extra cash, and I trust them with my jewelry. So I reach out to them, and I say, hey, you want to make some money? Yeah. <laughs> and then really, honestly, I travel to them, I support them, and we sell, and we sell a lot. So that's really helped. Um, the other thing that I've started doing is really um, posting more in my private group. I have a phobia of doing videos. So in a private group, right I, now. <laughs> yeah, well, you wouldn't know right now, but I am. But, um, you know, and so like I have like a private group and at least I know I'm talking to 400 people, not 10,000 people. Mm -hmm. And like the 400 know that I know that they love my jewelry. So I feel comfortable. So I've really started upping my videos and my pictures, but really being authentic about it. Because initially it was like, well, my hair is not good. I don't feel good. You know, yeah. I've got like something. Yeah, I just don't feel comfortable. But now I just keep it as raw and real as possible. And they love it. They just love that's that they so can great. connect with me. So that, that is so different. great. And I love it that you have a Facebook group. Because I think a lot of people who's designed fine jewelry and ex more expensive jewelry. Uh, what's your price point range? Uh, so my price point is 400 to about 1300 Okay. That's, that's a decent, like a decent range and like kind of up there, you know what I mean? So I think it's awesome that you're, you're using a Facebook group for a fine jewelry brand to create community, which is yes. amazing. Yeah. That, that's incredible. So, okay. Everyone wants to know about this trunk show. Tell mm -hmm. us what you did. Let's break it down. Um, so let's start with a high level. Like how did you kind of like roll it out? And then I want to, I'm going to ask you a little bit more about that in, granular details to kind of figure out how you did this okay so um it was uh, every year on my birthday i like to give back to my community mm -hmm. so i always have big sales so this i basically wrote to everybody let them know we're having a sale uh, it's only going to be um 8 p.m on live only on a certain day um and that's basically what i did to be honest yeah. it was a facebook live and that was it that was all i did like i just told them that invited them did a video you know, emails and that was it. So you, you sent, how many emails did you send to get people to the event? I sent five, five emails. Okay, cool. In a week. In one, five emails in one week. And how many people ended up showing up? Uh, I think there was about 59 that stayed on. Wow. The entire time. The entire time. Uh, and by the way, I had a meal function. My computer died as well. I logged back on. They were all back on again. And I was, I was like, Oh my gosh, I was freaking out. I was like, I'm just going to, Pop back on like nothing's happened. You're like, whoops, little tech glitch here. No big okay. deal. It's not even Mercury retrograde or anything. <laughs> and it was fine. They were all like ordering again, you know? So did you create a Facebook event to you, like an invite on Facebook or no? No. You know what? I was going to do that, Tracy. And then I thought, if I do that, once that event is over, then I don't have, I'm not in touch with them anymore. So if I have it in my group, new yeah. ones are coming, they're staying, and I'm constantly retargeting in there. So I kept them in my, in my private group. 
Okay. Awesome. That's, I like this. I like this idea. And I think the private group sale is so, so helpful. Um, person, um, how, okay. So you did this, do you do it on zoom or just like a regular Facebook live? Just a regular Facebook live. And was it only you or was Ben helping you? I was in it. Ben always wants to be in it. I'm like, but one day I'm looking at you and think, what are you doing? <laughs> he always wants to be in it, but he was actually at the back end helping me back and all that okay. sort of stuff. Okay. So let's talk about how you sold the pieces. Were you guys posting images or was it that you were just showing the pieces on the Facebook live? So yes. just featuring the pieces. Yeah. Super simple. Like this is like low tech. Yeah. Very low tech. So you basically, your computer right? or your like a phone or my an desktop, iPad? my computer. So I cleared my table, right? Everything was off except for my computer. I had a four papers everywhere. So in one a four paper, I'd have like 20 rings on it. Right. Okay. With the price, with the size before I, before I um, started the video, I mean the live, I sent out rule posts. Um, I sent out um, a video on how to measure your ring and know your ring size. So they would know how they were talking to me. So I, I basically started off by showing them all the rings. And then after I showed them the rings, I'd say, right, does anyone have any questions? You want to see anything again? Then I would show them again. And then I would move to like pendants and then I would do all of that again. Then I, so I, would, I just sectioned it out so that it was neat and tidy. Um, and then I got everyone to make sure that, um, they had to say sold and they had to say what number ring it was and the email address. Mm -hmm. So that was something that really created frenzy for the ladies because they could see everyone was just buying and they were like, Oh my God, Oh my God. And so they felt like they had to rush to, so it really wow. created urgency. So it was crazy. And I said to them, first come first up. I only have one. It's a, you know, and so I did that. I styled as well while selling. So I'm like, this ring is really good. It's a statement ring, statement with minimalist, wear it with this. So I was giving them ideas like that as well. Um, and kind of talking about what's happening, you know, in New Zealand at the same time. Because like a lot of moms have to like be the canteen lady. They've got yeah. to teach, you know, be a school teacher. So I was talking about all of that. And like, we were all excited because takeaways were opening like this week. So I was like, are you guys happy? So we're talking about that sort of stuff. Yeah, that's basically what I did. And so when they commented sold, what was the process after? Did you have like links for them to send a purchase or did you just email them an invoice after? Or how did that work? So basically um, what I discussed with my web designer was I would send out a product. So I created a product on Shopify with their okay. name and information I just sent it. And it was so much better because it was linked to my Afterpay New Zealand, Afterpay Australia, Layby, uh, PayPal, credit card, bank deposit, it's six options on payments. So it was all on my website. So I just linked it to them and they were just, they were like, oh my God, you're so fast. Bang, 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 bang. It was awesome. <laughs> and so th did a lot of people take you up on the Afterpay? Yes. A lot of Afterpay, a lot of credit card, a lot of Laybys. Wait, wait, what's the last thing you said? Lay by. What does that mean? Like layway? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So they pay like a certain, so what's the difference between lay by and like after pay? Nothing. Well, there is after pay is six weeks or eight weeks and um, lay by is like four weeks, but, okay. but I get all my money obviously. And you know, they That's deal correct. with lay by and yeah. And okay. So if, if for some reason they default, it's the, it's lay by or after pays yes. um, risk. Okay. Yeah. That is really cool. So you made yeah. a, a separate page on each Shopify thing for each product. And so that gave people payment options. It's, and that's really important because yeah. since you're selling fine jewelry, not everyone's going to have maybe like 1300 bucks to just drop down right away. Exactly. So what did you do to actually stay organized? It sounded like you had some papers on the table with uh, like, and then you were categorizing categorizing it by category. Was there anything else that you did to organize um, how things were sold or any, any other things that you were doing? Not really. I just did it by categories, made sure everything was, the ring sizes were done. Sizing was all, you know, there. Right. Okay. Um, and then they all knew first come first serve. So they knew already they had to be quick. So, and I just went back and then just whoever, whoever got that ring first, got it first. And if I had a spare, then I would make another one. So like there was a lot of spares that I had that I didn't think I would sell that I sold as well. That's so cool. You know what I love about this is that 
uh, sometimes people get so fancy and technical and you just kept it super simple. Yeah, I wanted to do that. Easy. So fun. Okay. Do you have any opportunity to upsell people or sell multiple people pieces to one person or how did that work? Yes. Well, already ladies were buying like seven, eight pieces of wow. what I was selling. But um, what I did was at the back end of my website, I had the upsell app on. So that was an option. So they, we had that. We had to think about six or eight upsell, you know, um, options that ladies chose. And even now they're still buying at retail price after the sale. Did you send out another email or something to get people buying even more? Because I know I when did. you posted a couple days ago, you're like, I've made 30,000. And then when we got on just a few minutes ago, you're like, it's already up to 40, 39 and it keeps going. So, you know what I did? I didn't do the email, but what I did was I posted in the, in the private group again. And I said, I still have a few pieces I'll be posting. So the next day they were still buying Sunday. They were buying. I was like, I got to cut this. So I cut it on Sunday and I think I had like only two or three pieces of jewelry left from the sale. And I had over a hundred pieces that I was selling. Mm -hmm. That's not including like five of each piece that I sold as well. So that was, that was what I did. And I also posted on uh, Instagram stories. So I managed to sell two on there because oh, I'm really wow. into that. Um, and on my normal Facebook page, I started posting there as well. And I started like posting things that had sold. So I was like, this ring sold last night for $200 and it's normally 800. So the ladies went crazy. And I was like, make sure you click here to join because we still have some pieces left. So it so, got oh, that was great. Did you get a bunch of people joining that way and buying? Yes. So did they go into your Facebook group or did, were they just going onto your email list or both? No, no, they were going into my Facebook group. Okay. Awesome. So, but when they buy, you can collect the email if they're buying. Yes. That is fantastic. Wow. You really did like a deep discount for like a $800 ring for 200. I, I did. I really did. We wanted to move stock. And because I thought that we're not going to make any money in the next couple of months. So yeah. I was like, I'm going like, to, I was wrong. <laughs> I wanted to do have like a big bang because next year so that they know that and I'm already planning for next year. So I have a strategy. Was there anything that you did to keep people on for the whole time? Did you have any giveaways or any sort of special like fun activities or anything like that? No, I did not. I just basically talked, styled, um, joked with them, entertained them as much as I could. Um, and they stayed. And like, if I knew people, my, my, my VIPs, they were asking like for a ring. I gave them advice. Like if they said, oh, shark, and I have that ring, I'll be like, no, this one's not your style. I know what your style is. You won't like this one. So I advised them straight away as well. Okay. So you kind of, you knew a lot of the people there. So you're just like, here's what you're going to love and all the things. Yeah. So that's yeah. Awesome. awesome. Did you run any ads? Yes. I ran two Facebook ads, two Instagram ads. Okay. So tell us about those. Like how did you target for the ads? Were you targeting your email list? Were you targeting your Facebook group? Were you targeting new people or what was it? I targeted our um, new, um, uh, obviously new, new customers um, and within my uh, age group and um, in New Zealand. And then I also targeted people that were in my group and their friends. So that those are the two different groups that I targeted. And do you, do you have any data from uh, how the Facebook ads worked for the, for you getting attendees to the sale? I'm going to have a look. I looked a little bit at it. There was a lot of clicks. I normally don't get that many clicks, but I got a bit of click. Okay. So that was a good sign, but I haven't really gone deep into it because analytics is not really my... <laughs> I think a lot of creative people can. I, was, I sell, I sell, but not really analytics. It's just like, oh. <laughs> so how much did you spend on the ads? $25 each ad. So I oh, spent $100. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yes. That is not very much. And it looked like it seemed like it was even worth, like super worth it. Yeah. Um, so one of the questions I was going to ask, what tech did you use? But you just like broadcast from your computer. Were you using any additional technology? No. Okay. Was there any, is there anything else that we should know that you thought was really cool or anything fun that happened? Uh, you should definitely wear your jewelry. Yeah. Because I wore these hoops and I sold over 20. Whoa. Yeah. Those they were just like, can we get that? Can we get that? And I sold like over 20 and now I'm making some more for mother's day. So definitely, definitely wear your jewelry. 
So what is, um, what do you guys, are you doing a special promotion for Mother's Day or just? Yes, I'm currently I'm in a collaboration with another brand. Amazing. And then I'm going to do, bring out some hoops on Sunday. I'm making them now just because I know the ladies are crazy for hoops. And are you, is the other brand, is it another jewelry company or something else? It's a clothing line. Oh, amazing. What's the name of it? So uh, it's called it. Mena, M-E-M-A. Oh, I love that. Oh, it's so amazing. Yeah. yeah. I know that we've talked a lot about the different things and you've really broken it down super simply. This is like, like basic. And I, I want to kind of say like basic.com in a way, like not to like minimize what you did, but like this, it's just true to show you, you don't have to get crazy fancy in order to have a successful show. It's really about creating the excitement, building the audience, getting people to show up building that anticipation, which you did so wonderfully. And one of the things is like, you know, we've interviewed, I've interviewed a lot of people over the years about uh, doing virtual shows, but they're typically in a lower price point. Is there any specific advice you'd have for fine jewelers who are trying to do this? Yeah. Don't be afraid to do it. One, two is make sure that when you've got your private group or whatever group you want to sell in, Make sure you're visible. Make sure you've got videos because, um, you know, you tr you're directing people into a group where you feel comfortable talking in or otherwise, if you're happy doing it on your public page, by all means, because I think that if they see your social media um, uh, like content, women commenting, posting what they receive, that they love it, um, they're receiving the mail today or you sending a picture of like the courier guy picking the, you know, picking your jewelry up, like it really builds credibility and they feel reassured that it's a real person there and you're constantly, um, you know, have updated content. They don't feel like, okay, well, who am I selling this to? There's no one behind there. So just having that reassurance um, is something that, you know, they feel very comfortable with. Yeah. And that you're legitimate and that you're the go-to brand. So I just want to give you a big congratulations and a birthday Thank hug. You. Virtually. I'm so proud of you. Where can everyone go, go and stock your beautiful jewelry? Um, you can check www.shahanajewels.com or Facebook and Instagram on Shahana Jewels. Thank you so much for being here, girl. It's so, Thank so you. great to see you. Yeah. <laughs> Wasn't that amazing? I am so inspired by Shahana. She is such a badass lady for being able to do such an incredible job in such a short period of time. Now, if you've been thinking about hosting a virtual trunk show of your own, but you're not really sure how to do it, and you're wondering how to kind of pull it off, I'd love to invite you to check out something very special that we have over here at Flourish and Thrive Academy. It's called the Virtual Trunk Shows That Sell Bundle, and it includes everything that you need to plan, execute, pull off, and sell during your virtual trunk show, and make sure that all your T's are crossed and I's are dotted so nothing falls through the crack. It is only $47. If you wanna check it out, head on over to flourishthriveacademy.com forward slash virtual bundle. Thanks so much for watching this episode today. This is Tracy signing off until next time. If you enjoyed this video, I'd love for you to like it and comment below and share with us your big takeaway. All right, this is Tracy signing off.